festival is really sort of like this introduction yeah. to, you know, it draws because of this yeah. national music and people want to come yeah. and experience it. But then they discover this incredible city. And so it's really, for a lot of people, changed how they view this city. It's a real, um, very special partnership that the National Council for Traditional Arts cultivated and the Park Service cultivated and the community. Um, at that time, the Regatta Festival, which is now the Festival Foundation. Yeah. And it was such a tight bond. There was a superintendent here named Sandy Walter, and she was a force, you know. Joe Wilson came to Lowell and walked through the downtown. Sandy took him around and everything else, and Joe, in, the, in, in his nice southern drawl, this would be a perfect place. And 33 years later, here we are still. And they, they cooked up this idea of having the National Folk Festival come to Lowell, and it really, everyone was behind it, you know? I mean, it was, sure. it's not often that a city comes together around an idea, right? Like everybody, and, and from what I've heard, the Lowell, you know, the National Folk Festival coming here was like the biggest thing to happen to Lowell and uh, was just amazing. I've seen photos of just, you know, people from the community just coming out for this festival. And it also, it gave, um, it gave recognition to Lowell, you know. Lowell had the National Folk Festival coming here and that was just really important and it continues today. People come to Lowell. Oh man, this is a beautiful city. Uh, first time here, and the people are receiving us well. Real good, we are so excited about being here in Lowell. You can't put, you can't put a, a price tag on it, it's priceless. To see people of all walks of life uh, are congregating it in one place, you know, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> does a post-industrial city overcome the reputation of being a rundown post-industrial where there's a lot of vacant and closed buildings? Even though the city is now transformed that the 5.3 million square feet of mill space, 98% is adaptively reused for other purposes, but there's still this, this stigma until people actually come back to Lowell and see it. So the Lowell Folk Festival 
is this incredible event that everybody is willing to come to because there's all of these things going on and it's this fabulous reputation. Um, and then they get here and they're like, wow, Lowell has transformed. They see that over 400 buildings have been restored. You know, they see that it's a safe and beautiful and vibrant place and they experience the culture that is here. And so I've had a lot of people who have said to me, you know, I moved here because of the Lowell Folk Festival for 1980. I think I looked at the census for 1980 and uh, it, the, the community, the self-identification of um, as being white or Caucasian was 98%. And now it's totally transformed. Um, it'll be interesting to see this census coming up but we have the second largest Cambodian population in the United States. Um, you know, we have a, a very large Puerto Rican community here in Lowell. Um, Spanish speaking, it's like 15 to 20% of the population self-identifies as Hispanic or Latino. We have large, um, because we're a refugee city, many people coming to this city. Um, we have many African countries, people from African countries. Lowell's a special place, and it's, it's, it's a special park, it's a special city, special community. It's very, it's got all of the, the uh, it's, it's got the special sauce, you know. <laughs> In my day job, well, I'm semi-retired. My day job, I'm a funeral director here in the city. So I get to see a lot of people that I see at their worst time and it's a, a time that I can sit and, and, and have a smile with them and, and enjoy something, you know? And it's given back to the community because the community has been good to me, you know? Uh, it's been good to me. I, I have raised my family here and uh, it's, it's, it's nice to give back. The funny part is we'll go to a festival, like we, Bangor's a three hour ride, four hour ride. We'll go up there and of course, it's when we get to see a festival. And I hope you don't ask me which band I like the best today because I haven't seen one. It's it just, you, you're tied up in what you're doing. So when we go to Bang or, you know, or someplace, another festival, we get to sit and see something. And I can remember up in Bangor sitting backstage and group coming off the stage saw our credentials. And, oh, Lowell. Oh, can you get us into Lowell? Everybody wants to come to Lowell. Gavilán que pío pío gavilán que ta 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 gavilán pico amarillo gavilán pico rosado gavilán People do appreciate uh, great art and other human beings. That's the other aspect, I think, of what we're doing is, and maybe what sets the National Council a little bit apart from some of the other, and this isn't a value judgment really, but it is, we have always tried to present, at least since 1971, when I've been heavily associated, the very best. And I think we have a commitment to the concept that the traditional arts are every bit as good and as virtuosic as any other art form. Uh, and that's what we've tried to present. You're drawn by the differences. You're drawn by the myriad different ways in which people can make music, can dance, can build things, can do all that. And that's always fascinated me. But over on top of that, 
is, well, yeah, there are all these neat different ways of doing it, but fundamentally, it's all the same. It's what, you know, it's the commonality rather than the differences, which to me is the important thing. The commonality is so important in that that's the way we can relate. That's what connects us to other human beings. Uh, at first listen, for instance, there is, at this festival, I just worked with them out in uh, Montana, there is a woman, uh, jaw harp player, mouth harp player, uh, from the far northern reaches of Siberia, and she's here with, with a Tuvan throat singer. Uh, it's, she's one of the most extraordinary thing, artists I've ever heard. Uh, she produces sounds uh, both with this instrument, but also when she, she doesn't just use the instrument. She'll take it away and make sounds, overtones and sounds with her mouth and all. Uh, never heard anything like it. <laughs> remember when I first heard the great Virginia ballad singer Texas Gladden sing, or Almeida Riddle, uh, or Hazel Dickens, um, you know, as somebody who grew up in an urban culture, when I first heard that I thought, that's kind of funny sounding. But once you listen to the different ways of expressing yourself musically, you get tuned into the fact that no, that's, <laughs> they're not hitting bad notes. They're hitting exactly the notes they want to hit. It's just not what you're used to hearing.